May look a little different this Memorial Day weekend as we experience a drought. The usual crowds lines at the shoot are expected, but the river is low and the levels are not flowing as quickly. Although some points may be shallow, the New Braunfels Police Department encourages folks to watch their alcohol consumption, especially if they're not good swimmers. Certain points of the river may be deeper than others, so New Braunfels Mayor Rusty Brockman encourages visitors to prepare for that. We also want you to be mindful of, of there is there is places uh, through the chute and down the river that uh, could be dangerous. We want little kids to have a good time, and so we really encourage the the, uh, the, the life jackets. We encourage anyone who maybe doesn't swim well to uh, to wear a life jacket so that you can be safe. Coming up tonight on the Night Beat, how businesses are preparing for their first rush of visitors since COVID restrictions relaxed. Millions of Americans are expected to travel more than 50 miles from home this Memorial Day weekend, even though airfare and gas prices are higher than just one year ago. For those staying home, hosting a barbecue in your backyard will also cost more than 2021, but shoppers can expect to possibly find some bargains at the mall. Here's ABC's Elwin Lopez with the details. Memorial Day weekend, considered the unofficial start to the summer season, is in full swing, and many Americans are eager to travel. It's nice. It's nice. It's a relief trying to get a little bit more normal again. TSA screening nearly 2.4 million travelers on Friday alone, saying it has increased its staffing to help deal with the crowds. We've increased the use of overtime. Uh, we're also uh, allowing officers that are in a part-time status to convert to full-time. United, Delta, and American Airlines collectively have more than 14 15,000 flights a day throughout the holiday weekend. Don't let the crowd concern you. It is going to be busy getting through, but know that it's absolutely safe. If you want to wear your mask on board, you could absolutely wear your mask on board. And on the nation's roads, AAA is predicting nearly 35 million people to travel to their holiday destinations by car, despite higher prices at the pump. Obviously, we we th it's in the back of our head, you know, how much we're going to spend, but uh, we got to enjoy life and be able to travel and not let things like that stop us. Nationwide, the average for a gallon of gas now stands at $4.60. For those staying home for the holiday weekend, backyard barbecues are also going to cost more. The price of chicken, beef, and hot dogs all increasing since last year. But there are opportunities for consumers to save money this weekend. They are changing some of the ways that they shop. And, and one of the big ways is that they are a little bit more conscious of sales and promotions. And that's where events like Memorial Day can really uh, come into play. Shoppers can potentially find deals on everything from backyard grills to air conditioners to clothes and shoes. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Hey, you know what's free at the mall? AC. AC. <laughs> free so, AC. I didn't I mean, know people still went to the mall. I Well, I mean, it probably won't be that crowded and free AC. So there Call you Amazon. go. Amazon. You don't even have to get out of your house. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, if you can stay in, um, especially during the hottest part of the day, that is, that's the play because it is just so hot. Again, we had a few days of rain chances early in the week, and now we're back to just plain old heat. It's really feeling a lot like summer out there this weekend, and the heat will continue over the next couple of days. I've got more on the rest of your weekend forecast coming up. The aquifer today is down one-tenth of a foot. We've got a good-looking pollen count, molds, grass, and pigweed are all low today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One question for Katie. You got any more of those cool fronts and rain chances <laughs> sitting around there in the weather None. department? I've no. checked my pockets. Mm. Uh, I think I misplaced them. Nice while it lasted. Yeah, it, it sure was. And now we're back to the heat. That is the focus of the forecast. I don't have any rain chances to talk to you about, and things are just going to be staying hot. <clears throat> Pardon me. That includes for the next couple of days. Here's a look at what you can expect. Sunday and then Monday, Memorial Day. High temperatures, upper 90s, 98 tomorrow. We shave a couple degrees off on Monday. That's because morning cloud cover will linger a bit longer, but still going to be hot Monday afternoon. Now what we do have going for us is a more noticeable wind the next couple of days. It was breezy today, but Sunday and Monday it will be windy at times with some gusts up to 30 miles per hour, so at least we'll have that wind. Um, 
Mother Nature's AC to kind of keep things moving around just a little bit. 97 now at the airport. You saw we were overcast this morning, but it only took an hour or two for the clouds to completely go away, and that's left us with full sunshine. We've got a nice south wind in place today, and some drier air has mixed in this afternoon. So take a look at your air temperatures, the number in white, and the heat index or the feels like temperature at the airport. It's 97, but it feels like 95. So in a lot of spots, the heat index is right at the air temperature or even a couple of degrees lower because we've gotten our dew point numbers down from the 70s this morning into the 50s this afternoon. So that really helps us out when it comes to the heat index. We'll see that happen again Sunday. Monday, not as much dry air mixing in, so we could have some higher heat indices Monday afternoon, but we should be able to catch a break again with more of a dry heat on Sunday. Notice we've got our dew points in the 50s now, this afternoon and this evening, but overnight, by dawn tomorrow morning, they shoot right back up. So tomorrow we'll start off humid with cloud cover, and then just like today by the afternoon, the clouds will go away and we'll also see some drier air move in. Winds, um, we had light winds yesterday. Today, winds are about 10 to 15 miles per hour, closer to 20 miles per hour from Rock Springs to Kerrville there. So the wind is helping us out even today. It's going to be more windy tomorrow, but we'll have a pretty steady breeze in place this evening and tonight. So if you do have plans, it is going to be very warm. The sun doesn't go down until 830. So uh, we'll still be in the 90s through 8 o'clock. After that, temperatures will slowly fall through the 80s. But again, we've got the breeze on our side to help us out. Here's a look at what you can expect for your Sunday. Again, morning clouds, temperatures starting off mid to upper 70s, very warm and humid. And again, just like today, we lose those clouds quickly by lunchtime, mostly sunny skies near 90 and then shooting back into the upper 90s tomorrow afternoon. South southeast winds 10 to 20 on Sunday with a few gusts up to 30 miles per hour. So we will have a windy at times uh, conditions, windy at times tomorrow. And then again, even as we get into Monday afternoon, south winds still sustained at around 10 to 20 miles per hour. If you're wondering if it's just as hot and sunny elsewhere across Texas, pretty much west of the Metroplex around the Lubbock, uh, Midland, Odessa areas, even closer to Wichita Falls. There will be a few severe thunderstorms there this evening. They'll fizzle out after the sun goes down and it is very hot elsewhere across Texas 103 in Abilene and 102 in Lubbock. We've got a little ridge of high pressure sitting over Texas. It'll move around a little bit over the next three to five days, but it's pretty much going to stay put and that's going to keep Texas in the southern tier of the United States hot here over the next week or so. So I keep your high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s over the next seven days. And unfortunately, no rain chances to talk about in the next week either. So just make sure you find a cool spot the next uh, the next couple of days. The pool is is a good place to be, guys. Definitely need water for that yes. forecast. Thank you, Katie. Our old friend, the big blue H is back. Yes. <laughs> Can't get rid of it. All right, Larry, uh, Miami forcing a game seven. And many feel this is the way it should be in the Eastern Conference between Miami and Boston, the top two teams out in the East. So yes, Miami forced a game seven. Thanks to Jimmy Butler and his huge playoff game. Plus in baseball, Blanco forced a game three in their playoff series coming up. It's hit to the second baseman. She checked, throw to home. And it's out. That's the ball game. Double play. The O'Connor softball team is heading to state for the sixth time in program history in big board sports. Facing elimination in the Eastern Conference Finals, the Heat beat the Celtics 111 to 103 last night to force win or go home game seven. Heat forward Jimmy Butler was the head of the snake, scoring a career playoff high 47 points, including 17 in the fourth quarter to make sure Boston did not come back. Butler's 47 points are the seventh most in NBA history for a player facing elimination. This is the way it, it, it should be, you know, with these two teams. It, it, it should have gone seven games. Um, the, the, the margin for error on both sides uh, is so small. Um, there's no two better words uh, in pro sports than game seven. And what's your confidence level in this team that you can go back to Miami and win a game seven? Um, scale to one to ten? Scale to one to ten. Ten. I mean, it shouldn't be any less than that, right? 
Game 7 is tomorrow night, 7.30 in Miami, and the Heat are favored by 2.5 points. East Central's Nalissa Smith returned to action with the Indiana Fever last night after missing the last four games with an ankle injury. And the rookie forward picked up where she left off with 17 points and five rebounds in 25 minutes to help the Fever beat the L.A. Sparks 101-96. So amazing to be back. Uh, every single day I was hurt, I was just counting the days down of when I could come back and play with this team. And it feels good. I mean, it's a little sore, but it's nothing that like, excruciating pain. Smith went two for three from three point range and the fever will next play Tuesday night when they host Washington. The Seattle Storm, who are dealing with a COVID-19 outbreak, signed second year guard Keanu Williams to a hardship contract Friday. They're down at least three players due to COVID, including guard Sue Bird. Keanu went scoreless in four minutes last night in Seattle's 79 71 win against the Liberty. The Blanco baseball team is trying to keep their season alive this afternoon at UTSA in game two of their class 3A series against Bishop. Bottom four, no score, two on. Cooper Chase delivers with a base hit into center field. Throw home is not going to be in time to nab the second runner as both come in to score. Blanco takes a 2-0 lead as Chase ends up on second. Next batter, they keep it going. Cameron Anderson drops the base hit in the right. Chase rounds third and beats the throw home, just barely sliding around the tag for a 3 0 lead. Blanco takes game two by a final score of 3 to 2. They even the series in one game apiece, so game three is underway as we speak. And you can watch it right now on the BGC app. Last night, O'Connor softball punched their tickets to the UIL State Tournament with a dramatic win against West Laclo in the Class 6A Regional Final. The Panthers jumped out to an early 5-1 lead thanks in part to this two-run homer from Jada Munoz in the top of the second. West Laclo then rallied and was in position to force extras down 7-6 with one out in the bottom of the seventh, a tying run on third. But O'Connor turned a game-ending double play as catcher Miko Dominguez made the tag at home, played for the final out. Amazing! The Panthers advanced the state for the first time since 2000. 2012. After upsetting Southern Miss yesterday, UTSA baseball played the Golden Eagles in Conference USA baseball tournament today in the semifinals this afternoon. Top of the second, Garrett and Poston hammers one to right field and over the fence for a two-run job and the Roadrunners lead two to nothing. That was right in his wheelhouse, I'll tell you. UTSA would add two more runs in the third to lead four nothing, and they currently lead seven to two in the top of the eighth. We'll have more on the night beat. In Division Three baseball super regional action, Trinity played Birmingham Southern College this afternoon. Top of the ninth, Michael Montreza singles up the middle, scoring two, and the Tigers lead 11 to eight. This after blowing a seven nothing lead. Trinity wins game two, 14 to eight, to sweep the Birmingham Super Regional, and the Trinity Tigers are heading to the Division Three College World Series. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys running back Tony Pollard is one of the NFL's most underappreciated players per NFL Network analytics expert Cynthia Freeland. She said Pollard's 6.4 yards per rush outside the tackles in 2021 ranked second among backs with at least 50 attempts per next-gen stats. And his success as the boys' number two back helped earn him PFF's second-highest grade, 90.3, among all running backs. Given questions along the O-line, there is strong and logical case to be made for Dallas to feature more plays of both Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott on the field. Pollard is entering his contract season. The San Antonio Athenian Soccer Club will host their oldest rivals, Austin Elite FC, tonight. Austin is 2-0 with six points, and they sit first in the United Women's Southern and Soccer Southwest Division. The Athenians are tied for second with three points and a 1-1 one -one record. The Athenians, who are your defending Southwest Regional Champs for the first time ever, love playing soccer and promoting the sport. Making a name for women's soccer in San Antonio is uh, important for not only um, us to reach uh, new levels professionally, but uh, the younger players um, watching. No soccer for women here in America is definitely on the rise. So I feel like any opportunity that girls are getting to like, grow the game, this is a perfect example of it. I mean, the professionalism, the everything, the facilities, it's all great. So I think it's a great opportunity for the girls. The Athenians will host FC Austin Elite tonight at 7 at Soccer Central. Admission is free, and San Antonio FC is at RGV FC tonight. Guys? Best of luck to them. Thank you, Larry. Yep. We'll be right back. All right, tomorrow, very similar to today. We'll start off with some early morning clouds. They quickly go away, and then 
a ton of sunshine tomorrow afternoon. Look for a high back close to 100 degrees. More wind tomorrow and for the next few days. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour possible tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday. The heat really not going anywhere, guys, and unfortunately, no good shot at rain in the next week or so. Be careful with those barbecues out there with that wind. Yeah, exactly. That is all of our time. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here for the Night Beat tonight on the Night Beat at 10. And we're starting on time. Yes. We'll see you then. Have a good evening.